What's up YouTubers, it's Everide on a beautiful Southern Utah day, and here I am at a place called Land Hill. I don't know who named that, but uh, didn't have much of an imagination. We got, a, we got some land, there's a hill on it. Let's call this thing Land Hill. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to a beautiful 85 degree day in Southern Utah. My objective today is to do a trail tail, and you're going to have to forgive me, I have a route planned out. I've got a trail tail coming, but it's not going to be on a trail. I'm on Mr. Rohonek's bike. I've already dropped it and scratched some stuff up and bent something. Ooh, look at that cool bird. Look at that cool bird. Anyway, I don't want to crash Rohonek's bike again, so I'm going to abstain from the trails, but there still will be a tail on the trail. No, there, no, it'll be a tail, not on a trail. This is as much trail as you're gonna see today, so I'm breaking my own rule. It's all good, I got a different bike. By the way, have you heard of what they're doing to my bike? Have you seen that response? If not, you can check me out on Facebook to see some extra goodies. Extra goodies, extra goodies on Facebook. <laughs> what am I talking about? Oh. Extra goodies. On Facebook you can see what's happening to the formerly what was called the Mighty Duck and what is probably now going to be called the Black Widow. That is the biggest loser Fitness Ridge Ranch. There is some fat people in there, but you know what's the coolest thing about the fat people in there? They have a will to make their lives better. That's cool. I put up a poll of what people would like to hear today, what kind of a trail tale they'd be interested in hearing, or if they'd like a, a decam, a dirt cheap adventure motorcycling series, and the U, not unanimous, but the vote overwhelmingly went to a trail tale about my first times on a motorcycle. And then I have to pull a Ride Victoria right now and start singing, feels like the first time. Feels like the very first time. I just, I just performed a lyrical terrorism on you because now you'll keep singing that, and uh, who knows what other words in that song even are? I don't even know who the artist is. At least, at least he gave a, a guess who the artist was on his li er, lyrical <laughs> lyrical terrorism video. Okay, wait. Here's the stop sign. Here, you'd think that the stop sign on the other side of the road would also do some kind of good but nope <laughs> today's road trail i guess i have to call it a road trail that's boring doesn't even rhyme so to begin this trail tale we need to start off with a background on my friend the, what's his name gonna be falcor we have a background on my friend falcor <laughs> falcor would often make sounds that went like some of you guys are not even gonna get that. You gotta be a child of the 80s to know what I'm talking about. So Falcor was a mean freaking kid, a bully, massive bully. I mean, uh, you had to watch yourself because on any given day, we're like 10 years old, right? If you were, you're up in a tree house and he's like, hey, maybe you can climb down and get something for me. And you're like, cool, I'll do it. And then you find yourself being peed on from above and Falcor is up there laughing. Suddenly you get hit in the side of the head by a rock and there's Falcor laughing at you. You go on a camping trip with the scouts and you hear, hey, Tyler. And then you look over like, huh, with your mouth open. And then there's some fish guts in your mouth. That's Falcor. In fact, you know what? <laughs> We're gonna rename Falcor. We're gonna rename him Big Head. This kid had a freaking big head and we're just gonna call him Big Head. Big Head was the type of kid who you would be playing baseball and suddenly you get beaned in the back of the head by a baseball. There's Big Head laughing at you. If you were skateboarding and crashed and like got a huge bloody rash on your arm, there was Falcor to laugh at you. There's enough about Falcor. Falcor, no, Big Head. Falcor Big Head. That's what his name was. That's his real name. So Falcor Big Head was a giant Oh my gosh. Hey, Roanek, I'm, I'm gonna have to clean your bike. I just saw a little river crossing. We're gonna get a little bit more trail in this tail than originally anticipated. I saw it and I have to do it. Sorry. You know, this is just a favor from me to you. <laughs> oh, wet boots. There's, there you go, uh, just a little favor for you. 
you know, just cleaning off your bike a little bit. As we take a pause from this trail tail, but we put a little bit more trail in the tail, we'll just go back through there, get back on the road, and thereby get back to telling the tale. The tale of the trail, of the, whatever it is. Cool rocks. Meanwhile, so Big Head Falcor was a giant and he was always doing mean stuff to people. His parents bought him whatever he wanted. I gotta interrupt this trail tale with another shorter trail tale. And then possibly another shorter trail tale after that. But it's short, don't worry. We were in year-round school. Do, do, do you know what that is? That means that you could be off track at certain times. And I happened to be off track at the same time as Big Head Falcor, and he was the only friend that I had that I was off track with. And so, basically we became friends even though he was a giant so one time I was hanging out with his little brother, Little Head Falcor, who was actually a really nice guy and turned into a good person. Big Head Falcor is in jail now for murder and uh, assault and armed robbery. We're out playing in this playhouse, you know, just kind of having fun. There's some ants in there and we're like playing with the ants and stuff. This is what I did when I was 10, you know. Anyway, Big Head Falcor comes outside and he's got like a ton of illegal fireworks. Now, I'm a huge fan of illegal fireworks. Don't get me wrong on that. I love illegal fireworks. But he comes out with a ton of them, puts them in the playhouse while we're in there, and then lights them. And this playhouse is tiny, all right? Lights the fireworks. We're in the playhouse. It's super loud. It's super scary. There's like fireworks blowing up in my face. So I get out of there. Behold, the playhouse is on fire. What do you know? Big Head Falcor runs away. Me and Little Head Falcor are trying our hardest to put it out. We're trying to put it out with the hose, and who pulls up but Mr. Falcor, and he is He comes stomping out of his truck, fire in his eyes, grabs the hose from me, pushes me down. I don't know how he did it, but he put that crap out like immediately. And then with his bare freaking hand, he grabs up this big slat off of the top of the playhouse, pulls this thing off. It's, it's like burnt, you know? It's still, I'm sure it's still hot, and it's got nails sticking out of it. And does he go after Big Head, who had run away? No. Did he go after Little Head, his own flesh and blood? No. He comes after me, the neighbor kid, and just starts beating the shit out of me with this 2x4, basically. When I talk about Falcor Big Head, or Big Head Falcor, whatever his name is, you gotta understand his dad was super abusive. Uh, he turned out bad because of that. Be nice to your kids. Second story, that dad actually later end up getting murdered. And I'm, I recently mentioned that Big Head Falcor was in prison for murder. Guess who he murdered? Mr. Falcor. Cool story, Hansel. Thanks, Olaf. So that was the mini trail tales. Now we're back onto the real trail tale, which isn't actually a real trail tale. It's actually a road trail. So Big Head Falcor had just about anything that he wanted. And he happened to have a 50cc motorcycle, this tiny little Honda 50. He invited me over one time and he was like, hey, ride this motorcycle. And I'm like, all right. Well, what I didn't know in true Big Head Falcor's fashion, the brakes were disconnected. So he puts me on this bike and I'm kind of riding it slow around his backyard. Some of my other friends are there and I'm starting to go pretty fast on this thing and they're all laughing because some of the friends know what's going on. They're like, use the brakes, use the brakes. Little did I know there were not brakes. And so I'm pulling every lever I can trying to figure out what this is. And when you pull a lever, you pop, right? You pop a wheelie. So I'm popping all these wheelies trying to control this little motorcycle. And I ended up going straight into a fence at as fast as that little motorcycle would go. Imagine like an 1800s black and white film where you see it kind of in fast motion like And then the guy just hits the fence and falls over real fast. That was me. Now, the very next time I was on a motorcycle, things didn't go much better, but this, this time it was completely my fault. So I had this really cool friend. He was ridiculously rich. His dad would buy the kids the absolute nicest things in every way, shape, and form. He calls us up one day, me and a couple of my other buddies. Hey, why don't you come over? We'll uh, ride motorcycles. So we go over there, and it turns out that his dad had bought him not one, not two, but like a fleet of brand new Harley Davidson motorcycles. And mind you, we're like 17, 18 years old at this time. Never ridden a motorcycle before. The previous time was when I crashed in that fence. He's got 
a couple of brand new Harley Davidson V rods and a couple of brand new custom Harley Davidson Fat Boys. So we hop on these motorcycles. I get on the one that he let me ride, and man, that thing feels good. But I think it was an 1800. That's about infinity times as big of a motorcycle as I was used to at that point because I'd never even ridden a motorcycle besides that little 50. Now, something on a motorcycle, for those of you who don't know, it's called a kickstand. Now, a kickstand only works when it's fully down. Let me show you what I did, okay? So, here we have the kickstand all the way down, and you can see that it holds the bike up, right? Now, what happens if you put the kickstand back just slightly, and then try to put the bike down... Oh, well, yep. Well, that's extremely embarrassing to do that <laughs> when I wasn't meaning to. Good, uh, it gives a good example, though. So I jump on that thing, and I knew the mechanics of a motorcycle. I put the kickstand up, and then they said, oh, hold on, so-and-so is going to come over. We'll get out the Vespa for him, because he's late. So I put the kickstand down. Lo and behold, the kickstand's not down all the way, and I literally rolled this beautiful probably $30,000 motorcycle over. It's got a low center of gravity, but it's still just a tank, and it's so hard to pick up. And so I'm sitting there in the dark, trying to pull this motorcycle up off of its side, and it's just making this awful sound, this you know, as it's grinding on the cement. So anyway, he's like, yeah, you're gonna have to ride the Vespa. So all these other guys are riding these huge hogs, and I'm riding like this little like wee, this little Vespa, but I love that thing. That was a lot of fun. And then uh, later I proved myself again, and I actually, I actually learned how to ride motorcycles on I believe it was a custom Harley Davidson Fat Boy 1800. Anyway, gentlemen and ladies, thanks for uh, giving me some inspiration on what to talk about in today's trail tale. Thanks, Mr. Rohanek, again, for letting me borrow your beautiful, beautiful bike and for doing such awesome things to my bike. Again, if you're unfamiliar with that, go over and check it out. Uh, make sure to check out MotorcycleVideo.org. Uh, doing good things. Uh, all you have to do is submit your username, and then uh, they'll do the rest to do some good with the content you provide. And you still get paid for AdSense, so it's a really cool thing to do. If you'd like to tell me what kind of content you'd like to see, come on over to my Facebook page, give it a like, and you can tell me basically whatever you want me to do, except for go kill myself. That would be rude. Anyway guys, Everide signing out, but not really because we're going past this cool lake, so I'll leave the camera rolling. See ya.